My name is Julian Leitner. I'm 17 years old. I'm a musician and philanthropist. And I believe I can change the world. When I was 13, I thought it would happen overnight. I thought I would just wake up one day having made the world a better place. See, I had just launched a charity called the Archimedes Alliance with the goal of democratizing philanthropy, of allowing ordinary people to make a global impact. And I did it by asking for two bucks from every donor. I was so convinced it would work, my faith was so complete that I honestly believed I would raise two million dollars in the first six months. I was ambitious and a little naive. To date, the Archimedes Alliance has raised more than $46,000 to fight global poverty. That's not enough, thank you. <laughs> that's, that's not nothing, but it isn't two million either. I haven't made a global impact. I haven't changed the world. But I have not failed. When I was 15, I thought it would happen by the end of the year. I thought I'd be off touring the globe and performing at festivals instead of studying for my sophomore year midterms. I'm a rapper, probably not what you're expecting, I know, but that's a story for another day. And I had just recorded my first song, Fight for a Cause. And so I gave her a whole album. It was gonna be called Cloud Nine. I didn't really have anything else, but I was going to finish it, record it, release it, and be on tour by the end of the year. You might be noticing a pattern here. I spent the next three years writing, rewriting, recording, re-recording, learning, growing, improving. The album still isn't finished, and Fight for a Cause isn't on. But I have not failed. I was really lucky as a kid. I had incredibly supportive parents and teachers and a community that always told me, you can be anything you want. You can do anything you put your mind to. And while those sentiments may seem a little cliche, a little oversimplified, they fulfilled their intent. They inspired me to make a difference, to express myself. They gave me the confidence I needed to launch the Archimedes Alliance, to pursue my music. But at some point, the narrative shifts. People stop saying, you can be anything, you can do anything. And they start saying, you need to have a backup plan. You're never gonna make a living that way. It's not always that direct, of course. I can't tell you the number of times people have said to me, you know, it's really hard to make it as a musician. Or, so, what do you want to do for a career? I don't know. Be a fucking lawyer? My driver's ed teacher told me about how he used to be in a hair metal band that played for hundreds, sometimes thousands of people that was the 80s. And as he reminisced, I saw past the misty-eyed story and heard what he was actually saying. I didn't make it. You're not gonna make it either, and you need to be ready for that. He, like so many others, had been convinced by life to abandon his dream, to go with his backup plan. And this, right here, is why I think the ideology of the backup plan as we talk about it is fundamentally flawed. If you're spending time working on a backup plan, then you're not spending time working towards what you actually want. So what you're doing is diverting resources from your plan A to your plan B. And if your plan A is so difficult to attain that you need or think you need a plan B, then you should be devoting all of your available resources to attaining it. Don't save food in case you end up starving. Eat the food so you don't starve. Which brings me to my next point. If you're working on a backup plan in case you fail at what you actually want to do, then you're creating a mindset and an expectation of failure. 
You're catering to the worst case scenario instead of doing everything in your power to realize the best case scenario. You compromise yourself before you even begin. But if you don't have a backup plan, what do you do when you inevitably hit a stumbling block? What do you do when plan A doesn't work out? Do you keep banging your head against the wall, insisting that you can do this, that you refuse to fail? No. You evolve. You figure out how to work around the problem. That's your backup plan. That's your plan B. Not something you do instead of plan A, but something you do to make plan A work. Evolution, not diversion. You don't change your goal, you change how you achieve it. If you're driving from Portland to LA, and halfway to LA you get a flat tire, you don't turn around and drive back to Portland. You don't keep trying to drive to LA with a flat tire, and you definitely don't decide you're suddenly traveling to goddamn Hoboken instead. You fix the flat tire. If you're working on what you love and it doesn't work out, you don't abandon it to do something else, and you don't keep trying the same things. You find a new way to achieve the same goal. The destination is the same, but the path is different. That's not to say this is easy. It's incredibly difficult. If you know what you want to do with your life, and it keeps eluding you, keeps slipping from your grasp, keeps getting further and further away until a day becomes a year and a year becomes three, it's easy to feel like you failed. But as long as you keep working, as long as you keep evolving, as long as you keep inching closer, you have not failed. So I didn't change the world overnight. I didn't raise two million dollars in six months or a year, or four, but I kept working. I kept learning. I learned how to maximize my reach on social media, and I learned that social media without traditional media isn't enough. I learned how to connect with people, how to motivate them, how to compel them to action. I learned not to judge my success by the size of the check I could write. Through Archimedes, I've been able to inspire people to make a difference, and I've been inspired to return. I've met a former child soldier from Uganda turned Olympic athlete, and an 11-year-old interviewer who's smarter than me. I've spoken to the school in Taipei and given a TED talk on this very stage. I've dug an irrigation ditch in Chamashia, Guatemala, and donated $40,000 to combat global poverty from my bedroom. I have not failed. My music? What about the world tour and the performance with Tupac's hologram at Coachella? What about Cloud Nine? Well, I learned something about that too. I learned that three years ago, I wasn't ready. I still might not be ready. But I spent those three years working day and night and some time in between to make sure that when that moment arrived, my voice would match my vision. My sophomore year, I performed in front of a thousand people at the Roseland Theater. My junior year, I got a crowd of 400 to chant my name. My senior year, well, I recorded the last vocal track for Cloud9 last week. And I realized something along the way. I realized that my charity work and my music are about the same thing. When I tell you in a press release that your two dollars and a tweet can change the world, it's the same as when I tell you in a verse that you are the only one who gets to control your life. That you are the only one who gets to decide how your story ends. I'm just repeating what my parents and teachers told me. You can be anything you want. You can do anything you put your mind to. Don't let the narrative change. Don't let life convince you to abandon your dream. I've been tempered my expectations. 
My goals aren't any humbler now than they were at 13 or 15. I still believe I can make a difference. I still believe I can do what I love. And now, I believe I can do them at the same time. My name is Julian Leitner. I'm 17 years old. I am a musician and philanthropist. And I believe you can change the world. Thank you.